Hey what is up everybody, welcome to another video of my Angular tutorial series. In today's video we're gonna start talking about data binding in Angular. I have decided to explain data binding under two parts. In the first part you will learn what data binding is, see examples of one-way data binding types such as property and event binding in this video. And in the second part, we're going to talk about two-way data binding and learn how to do that with a special directive called ng-model, but that will be covered in the following video. Before we begin, if you are here for the first time, consider subscribing to my channel for learning more about web development and activate the bell so when I upload a video, you will get notified. Okay, so what is data binding? Data binding is a general technique that provides a way to transfer data between the UI or the view, we can say, and the model. There are basically two ways of data binding in Angular, such as one-way and two-way. Data binding also makes the application more dynamic, because, for example, when some data changes here in the model, the view immediately renders the new data, or vice versa, maybe an event happens in the view and then the model gets updated. So data binding connects these two structures, and this approach makes our app dynamic. Sending data from view to model or from model to view is called one-way data binding and if the data flow is from model to view then it's called property binding otherwise it's called event binding. They are named as one-way because when data is updated or managed for example in the view it will modify the model but the same data cannot be managed in the model it can just be notified. There is also a second type of binding between the view and the model, which is called two-way data binding. And what's different in two-way data binding is that this time data can be updated both in the view or in the model. And that's why it's called two-way. And I'm going to explain the details of two-way data binding in the following video. All right, guys, now let's start with the property binding. What we're going to do here is that we create and manage some data inside the model here send it to view and see how it gets affected. Actually, in the last video, we have used property binding here with the ng class. When we need to use our CSS classes dynamically, we use ng class and as you can see, we took ng class inside brackets and this is exactly what property binding is. But this is for CSS and I would like to bind a variable from our actual model. So let's say we create here an input field. And as you know, in some cases, we can disable the input field with the disabled attribute. By the way, this is an HTML attribute and has nothing to do with Angular. And when we set this disabled attribute, then users cannot type anything inside. It just doesn't work. Okay. Now I am creating here a Boolean variable called is disabled. That will be a Boolean and let's set it to false. Now, when I call this variable here and assign it to our disabled attribute, the disabled attribute should turn off and I should be able to type again. But as you can see, this doesn't work. That's because here we defined a Boolean variable, but here we assigned it as a string. And we cannot just assign a Boolean variable like this here in the HTML template. That's not gonna work. So how can we fix that? Angular provides a solution here. If we take this HTML attribute inside brackets, these brackets bind this attribute to our model. And then this variable won't be taken as a string anymore here, but it will be assigned as a Boolean. So let's try again. I can type some text to the input field because this, the disabled attribute is set to false. Now when I come back here and set it to true, and if I try this again, as we can see, I cannot type anything. So this is an example of property binding, which is being used to transfer data from model to the view. And when something changes in the model, like this variable here, the view gets notified and also changes. But since property binding is one way, we cannot manipulate data here in the view and send it back to the model. Alright, so with property binding, data flows from a components class to the view. Another direction of data flow is also possible from view to the model, which is called event binding. 
When a user interacts with the UI, like clicking on a button, hovering an element or other similar events, this time we need to transfer data from view to the component class, which we can do that with event binding. It's also one way like property binding, but like the opposite of it. So let's see how it works. Let's create a button here. And the type of this event will be click. But this time we use parentheses instead of brackets. This is how the syntax is and we're gonna bind it to a function. Okay. Now let's create our function. On click. And this will log a message to the console. Button has clicked. Like this. Okay, now let's try it. Let's put a click text here. Okay, now let's try it. When I click to this button, we should see the message here. So as we can see, the message has appeared. So when the user interacts with the UI, like in this example by clicking on a button, data will be sent to the model, like it says an event has happened on the view, so do something. And the model takes the information and triggers the function immediately. So this is how event binding works. Now there is also a special directive called ng-model, which is being used for two-way data binding. I will explain the details of two-way data binding and ng-model in the following video. If you find this video useful, please hit the like button and thank you guys for watching.